have a fantastic guest today. His name is Emilio Lopez, and if you've been following uh, some of the comic books associated with video games or some of the comic art or some of the, uh, you know, cool um, uh, characterizations of some of your favorite characters online, chances are pretty good that you've seen some of Emilio Lopez's work. Uh, but tomorrow... He has got artwork that is going to be a part of the brand new Contra game that Konami is publishing, and he's here to tell us all about it. Please welcome Emilio Lopez. Good to see you, my friend. Hello, guys. This is uh, your home studio in New York that you're joining us from? Actually, this is uh, Philadelphia. I moved here about three years ago. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Philadelphia is an awesome city. How did you get connected with the video game industry, Emilio? What do you, I know that this is, uh, yeah, I've met you many times at E3s over the years. Yeah. But how did it's, you make that first connection? It's, a, it's actually kind of a crazy sort of thing. Because uh, so uh, I, obviously I've, I've worked as a freelance artist for years. I've worked in comic books. I've worked in animation on like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Black Dynamite, Metalocalypse, and Adventure Bros. And I've worked in comics like... Marvel, um, you know, Spider-Man and all kinds of other stuff and DC and all that. And the video game stuff, it's it's I've always been into video games. So it's always been in there. So like like in 2013, when you actually met me yeah. the, for the first time, it was outside of out of a out of an EA um, event at E3. Yep. That show I was actually uh, I was actually covering the show as a photographer for uh for the for a site run by a friend of mine, Torrance Davis. So along with all the freelance stuff, I'm doing this as well. And that's kind of where my where kind of I kinda of got involved in all this stuff. So I you know, I always wanted to work in video games and stuff like that. And like one thing I made a decision about years ago is like especially to to survive as a freelance artist, you kinda of have to be a bit more wider and be able to do more things than just one thing. So right, that's right. how it kind of kind of sort of came across. And the other thing was that I, I just at that or and that at time I also started posting my, my the the stuff that I would do in my spare time. A lot of times uh a, a lot of it is actually Metal Gear stuff and I actually am known a on the internet a little bit more for my Metal Gear stuff than the the, the wider array of things that I've worked on. Well, it's just kind of funny. Which is great, though. I mean, it kind of speaks to the openness and, and um, you know, the accessibility of the video game uh, creators out there. I mean, you, you went yeah. to e E3 with a portfolio. That's one thing I definitely do remember about you. I think you had been a fan of G4 and you were watching G4 and you oh, came up. And, oh, and, and, yeah. It was like, I, I, it was like, because the E3, like at least back then, it was just like you, you'd see everybody. You'd see all the guys that you, you know, see like I met, you know, uh, Greg Miller and all that stuff. And when I came with that stuff, and the, the and the print that I gave you, I was yeah. actually I, I had just done like a, a comic convention somewhere in Chicago. I think it was C2E2, and I had a bunch of additional stuff already. And I was like, you know what? Maybe while I'm covering this thing, I'll just if I see anybody who who I know likes like art and Metal Gear stuff, I said, you know, I'll just give it to you. So like that's what I did. So I that, I gave one to you outside of the EDA thing. I saw Greg Miller. I gave one to him, and I gave one uh, to uh, a guy on uh, the PlayStation Access, um, uh, uh, Robert Robert Pier uh, Pearson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unreal. So. And I I know that you've worked with Kojima over the years as well, right? Well, not not really. I've actually not worked with him at all. Uh, I, there was maybe one thing that was mentioned to me uh, a while ago, but it really wasn't. It, nothing really came of it. Okay. Uh, I think he. I think he, one of his guys mentioned they said they want to work with me at some point, but it really never happened. Ah, but so it's all been out of a love for Metal Gear. Like all of that work that we've seen of yours has yes, just been for because it, you love just, it. Yeah, it's just stuff that I would do on my spare time in between doing freelance jobs or big things like that, and that's all that stuff that that I was posting online. Yeah, that's all. Crazy. That. <laughs> is that what led? Because obviously, you know, Konami is very sort of connected to their fans mm -hmm. out there. Is that how you built a bit of a relationship with Konami? They knew that you were uh, big on yeah. Metal that Gear? it was that was it was that it was. Ken, you know, Kenichu Kenichu Imaizumi reposting my stuff. That's Kojima's um, producer. producer. Yeah. Um, the, it was Kojima himself reposting my artwork, and then Konami posting my artwork as well. So it was wow. all of these sorts of things. So it's like, uh, you know, it, it's not like like my stuff. It, like I can I can kind of do a lot of different styles and stuff like that. So it seemed like it, it really impressed him, and that's where I kind of got 
into the Konami thing. And that's where I started talking with them about something. It didn't We didn't know what it was. It was just like, hey, we want to do something in the future. And that's kind of how it began. That is um, wonderful. And then, of course, it, it, things got very different for Metal Gear and for <laughs> Kojima mm-hmm. Productions and stuff. Are you, uh, is, because you're such a Kojima fan, are you excited for Death Stranding? And have you done a bunch of Death Stranding stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it, it, it was actually kind of hard for me to do a little of that stuff because, you know, you don't know really much about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I did a couple of I did, I did a series of little shibi like uh, Death Stranding things. And these are, again, between all the bunches of projects I've been working on, I'm doing this stuff as well. So that's that's kind of awesome. Uh, one of the things that I uh, really have loved that you did, you did covers, I think, for the Batman Arkham Knight uh, comic collection. Yes, uh, that was with uh, Gene, uh, uh, Fabok, who who is a current DC artist. I actually worked with him on uh, Batman uh, Detective Comics, so maybe uh, 23 and 24 a while ago. Nice. And uh, they actually asked us to like do. They're like, "Hey, you know, you want to do this?" I'm like, "Yeah, let's go for it." So yeah, that was a special edition cover that we did. For if you pre if you if you got the game, you got a comic book with it, and it came with this cover that we did. Uh, that's yeah, so that's it right incredible. there. <laughs> and that must feel amazing as a fan of the medium to kind of, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you had success already as a freelance artist and working yeah. in animation and all that, but you're, you're just a fan of these games and what this creativity allows you. And then suddenly you're contributing to that world. That must yeah. feel incredible. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because it's like uh, I mean I couldn't I could have never imagined like when Metal Gear Five came out I actually did an art show for that for Konami yep. and then then a few years then later after that I did bi- some stuff with Bioshock and then I did you know some stuff with uh you know uh, the Zone of Ender Second Runner and this is kind of all born from the 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 just the stuff that I did in my spare time which that's, is kind of funny <laughs> that's wild and, and so what- I also think. I also think that the other thing that helped it is because I was I have already been kind of a time tested of uh, uh, you know uh, freelancer for about for years since I had done it. Yeah, I mean, and you're working with great studios and they're putting a lot of faith and trust into you. But I I love this story of because uh, it's the EP story as well, right? Like, <laughs> and I think it's every fan website that ends up becoming a uh, a professional one and. It, it, the games industry is pretty incredible for that. And it's not like the comics industry is closed off, but you've worked in comics. Was it a bit of a tougher break in when you started to do art for comics or was, did you find that as receptive? Well, no, it's it, it actually, it actually wasn't. It was, uh, it's funny because uh, I, when I, my, my original dream job yeah. was to become a comic book artist. But, uh, at the time that I became involved and got, got into the industry, I was, uh, I became an intern at a really, really kind of dark time in comics when Marvel comics was actually going, oh, yes. uh, bankrupt. When and, you could buy uh, all of Marvel for a hundred million bucks. <laughs> yes. So at that imagine? point in time, I'm an intern there and I'm seeing people crying at their desks and I'm seeing, wow. I'm seeing all these people getting let go. And it, it just kind of affected me at the time. I'm like, maybe, maybe this is something I don't, maybe I can't get into this sort of thing. Right. So at that point in time, I made the decision. I'm like, you know what? Uh, maybe if this comic thing doesn't work out, I, I, I need an, I need, I don't, uh, I, I need to have there. There doesn't need to be any excuse why a, a company or somebody would hire me to do something in artwork. It doesn't really matter what it is. So That's at cool. that point, I was like, "All right." I uh, decided to go. Uh, I uh, w- w- took like got an illustration degree, and then I uh, took an internship at uh, on on animation, and that's how where I started in animation. That's great. Like, you know, doing stuff in animation. And then the animation stuff kind of led to comics because I ended up working with a guy who I've been working with for close to 10 years now, Kari Randolph, who I'm doing my new book, Excellence, with for uh, Skybound Entertainment. Nice. I, he was like, we got let go all at the same time. We're all working at, uh, at this company. And he's like, hey, I'm thinking of getting back into comics again. So uh, you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I became his colorist for, for about 10 years. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so you, you, you got a uh, an illustration degree. You actually went mm-hmm. to school to kind of learn some of the fundamentals. Do, oh do yeah. You, do you still draw your work with pencil and paper, or are you all digital now? Uh yeah, I'm all digital now. But it was it's about it really for me. It doesn't really matter what I'm using. It's just like it's just about transferring that knowledge to the other you know to other platforms and stuff like that. So it wasn't. 
like before that I had already been a painter and I had already inked my hand and all that stuff. So it's just about finding ways of getting that to work in, in like the digital space. That's wonderful. Amelia, you've had a lot of cool projects and a lot of success in yeah. this world. And I know that a lot of people that are watching are going to wonder how how they do it. And I think one of the cool things about you is your ability to network and connect with people on it. So give us an insight into that. What, what do you... What are some of the, 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 you know, tricks of the trade for you in order to get people to remember you and to keep hiring you? Well, I mean, I, I'm the, the main thing is I actually just try to do the do, be a, a good worker and do the best that you can with the job. I mean, uh, I've, I've made these sorts of connections within the industry because I've been a reliable, you know, I've been reliable for years yep. and also just be, been able to to kind of throw away any sort of a lot of the ego that comes with a lot of that stuff and just be able to kind of, all right, you know what, it's not exactly what I'm wanting to do, but you know, let's make this thing the best thing that we can at this point in time. And that's, that's kind of how I've, I've, I've sort of looked at it. I mean, yes, you want to be, obviously you want to be the top guy. You want to be the guy like, yeah, that's the first guy that you think of, but it does. It doesn't exactly work like that. So yeah. you have to be able to work in teams and work with pe other people. And through that, you earn reputations with people, and then that they go on to other things. All the 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 Bioshock thing, the the uh, and the, what was it? The uh, Zone of Enders things were all inter kind of born from all the things that I did before, which is yeah. interesting. So yeah, yeah. You 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 provide a solution. Yeah, not exactly. Not just the talent, you provide the solution. And you, exactly. You, you uh, are a fair person to work with, and people remember that. Exactly. You don't, yeah. you know, like, obviously when, you, obviously when somebody asks you, say, hey, you know, uh, we, what do you think about this? So you, you give your opinion, and you, like, and you, but you're really playing jazz. You're riffing off of what they're working with. Cool. So it's I like, like if you can't, I feel like if you can't exactly play along, that, that's when things start to become problems, you know? Yeah. You mentioned that uh, you were working in comics when it was a bit of a darker time. How how are comics now as an artist? Is there a lot of work? Or, or it's a, is morale it's, high? It's a comics now for me. It's been has been very good because I just I just kind of like I like working with Kari Randolph and I like doing stuff like so like all the different connections I've made to that I, fi I find it's, it works out really well. I do like that the the fact. That you know the digital space has kind of opened up things to people that wouldn't normally be able to get these sorts of books. There's a lot more books out now than there had ever been, right. and they're a lot easier to get your hands on yes. as opposed to you know, you're, you're, you know it's unfortunately because I'm I'm a you know paper comic book guy and you know it's sad to see some of these stores sort of kind of go to the wayside. But I, there is that space now where you can get those sorts of books that you would never usually see on the shelf. I'm a paper guy too. Uh, you know, yeah. I have a pretty good collection of it all. But I have to admit, like the act of being able to zoom in on art you know, on a on an <laughs> iPad, it's, it's kind of it spoils you a little bit. You know, have you have you, you done the thing where you've walked up to a comic and uh, on paper and tried to zoom in on it? <laughs> Uh, actually, no, I've actually never done that. Uh, like, I have a, I have very little, little digital comics. I actually have more actual physical comics. Oh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have to admit, like that Marvel, um, Ultimate collection where you pay your hundred bucks a year and mm -hmm. you get 25,000. That's a pretty compelling deal for me. I like yeah, that very a, much. A, a good buddy of mine really loves that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about, uh, Contra Rogue Corps, which, uh, is launching tonight. And tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. So, how, how, do you have butterflies right now? Are you nervous? Are you excited? <laughs> how do you feel? This is part. This is your baby. Oh wow. Am I nervous? I, you know what's funny? Like again, I like I, you kind of do a lot of these things, and uh, it's just so like it. Like I don't. I, I'm, I don't have any butterflies with it. I just feel like I'm like this. It's finally. It's finally. It's that that sigh of relief that it's finally kind of out there. Yeah. I kind of felt that a little bit when I finished when I finished off the the, uh, the the at least the initial first motion comic that we did for, yep. for it. You know yep. the full the full the in game one. But I feel like it really sort of hit me when I actually was started going to events like uh, the one that we had over the weekend and as well as the the um, the one that we did, you know, when we were at E3 and just seeing it all over the walls and I'm like, wow, this that was that's your the, art, wasn't that it? That was my work. And, yeah. and I was like, 
that stuff doesn't actually get old. I, again, <laughs> like me being on Ninja Turtles and me being on all this stuff, seeing my stuff on TV, that I'm like, wow. It's like because, you know, you, you work at this stuff for so long, so many hours. And then just to have that sigh of relief and then all of a sudden, boom, it's on TV magically, yeah. you yeah. know, or on a on a store show. I, that, that is the part that I'm like, wow, that is so cool. And then just, yeah, and then somebody handing me over a, 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 the, the game, I mean, <laughs> the actual game with my work on it. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, tell people that don't know, because uh, I've just started to get into this game. I'm, I'm going to try to have uh, some thoughts on the game tomorrow. <laughs> but tell people that don't know, what is the concept for Contra Rogue Core? And uh, what did you contribute to it? Well, the concept of a rogue core is, well, then, well according to Nakazato-san, it's really just about having fun. You're not really supposed to take the game really that serious. It's over the top. I mean, I mean, Contra in general has always been about over the top stuff. Like, I mean, think about Contra 3, right? A guy, you know, jo- goes from a, a hover motorcycle and jumps onto a missile that's that's being shot at a monster, <laughs> you, you know, and you're, you know, that, that sort of stuff. And I think that's the sort of thing he's sort of trying to go. Of course, sort of simple sort of gameplay, easy to pick and play, and you can play anywhere that you want. You can play with your friends, you know, in, on couch co-op. You can play online. And I think that's the sort of thing that he's trying to go for. For me, on the on the on the motion comic end, it was just it, where it was about sort of developing um, uh, Nakazato-san's uh, uh, st- plot because he had a he had a he, for him he had a, it seemed like he had a, a plot that he had us kind of work off and then we sort of develop it on our on the motion comic side. So it's a, we had writers and we have uh, you know all kinds of stuff to kind of help flesh out those ideas. And what was just great about it is that he kind of let us. Uh, play with these ideas, you know, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, obviously he had, he had specific ideas for certain things, but he was uh, able to kind of like, okay, yeah, that actually, yeah, you know, if you, you do this, also do this, you know, which was really great, uh, you know, even though it, you know, there's also that sort of language barrier and everything. There's a, there's a process, especially when dealing with, uh, with folks from Japan, you just a whole, you have to get things translated and you have to go through all, all those different things. But I do feel like it was, it worked out really well with us. That's awesome. Were you guys sent um, uh, concept art on the characters, or did you? Were, and then were you guys able to kind of, you know, tailor the characters in different ways, and then that was reincorporated back into the 3D polygon models, or how did that work? Oh well, the the initially when I got on the project, on, on a, um, it was everything was more when we were first talking about it was that everything was already designed. Uh, so Kaiser and uh, Hungry Beast and all the characters from the game were already designed by uh, Nakazato seems in Japan. Yep. And for us on the motion comic team, it's really more about adapting those sorts of things to the motion comic. Obviously, because you have all these, you know, these are, these are 3d models and, uh, you know, a lot, you know, you just, all you need to do is just draw it once, you know, you just make it once and then it does it all. It draws every single angle that you need it cool. for us. You know, I, I, and the, and on our other guy and the other guys were working on it, had to essentially, you know, draw, draw everything. So, you know, just finding those places where we can fit it in and all that stuff. That's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. what's the story of the game? Can you take us into what's, what's actually going on? Well, uh, you know, after the after the alien wars, wars this, uh, you know, everybody thought that the that the aliens were gone, but uh, something else happens, and that's what we see in the in our, our our first cinematic, which is the damn city just pops out of the ground with all these different fiends and everything. Uh, you're also kind of show, I notice you're showing uh, our uh, our recent motion comic, which yep. uh, kind of uh, f- uh, fills in the gap between. Uh, the the last Contra games and our new uh, Rogue Core game. So and that that and the game also kind of explain that what, what where where we're going and where, where we're going to uh, you know come to. That's cool. Um, you've got a lot of the core Contra team that worked on games like Contra Three worked on yes. this game. Is, is it the same team inside of Konami or was it an outside uh, development? I'm not exactly sure of the inter- who, uh, the, the, as far as the internal team, uh, but I do know Nakazato-san is, he's, he's Contra from like Contra 3, Contra he's, Hardcore. He's Mr. He, Contra. He, yeah, he's Mr. <laughs> Contra. He knows these titles and he's worked on the Ninja Turtles arcade game. In fact, our game has a little, a little uh, Easter egg of that when you hit one of the, when you, uh, when one of the monsters that gets their energy kind of low, he kind of 
shoulder check them and they go flying into the screen like the old Ninja Turtle games. I, I noticed kind of that, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've been uh, reviewing a lot of these 16-bit superhero games recently and yeah. I noticed, I was like, yeah, I know what that's that what they're doing yeah. right there. When I play the game, so f I mean, I'm not super deep into it, but it kind of mm -hmm. feels like it's, um, it feels like a Smash TV variant of a Contra type of experience. Yeah, it's a definitely it definitely feels it feels like Smash TV or Dead Nation or um, you know those sorts of sorts of waves and you know twin stick sort of shooter sort of games. Uh, yeah. But I do but I do but every so often the game sorts of kind of changes views, kind of like the, a little bit like the way the original Contras used to do, where like you played the arcade game, like one minute you're side scrolling, then minute you're top angle, then you're behind the Ryu, and I, and the game kind of does that too, especially when you fight bosses. You see we go behind uh, over the shoulder view, and you can fight like a uh, big fuzz or any of the other guys that are in there. That's awesome. When they were putting the uh, motion comics together, were they sending you proofs and, and uh, were you having to kind of retool any of the art to match, you know, some of the, the hysterics out of the voice room or anything like that? Uh, no, well, like what we, the way we did, the way we did this is, uh, I mean, motion comics are, you know, well, so a lot, just like a misconception about motion comics where it's, it's actually just a comic that you just and made and do the stuff too, but all of it has, it's essentially a limited animation project. Mm -hmm. So we did it essentially like we would do an animation project. We do was we go in first and we, um, you know, have our, you know, we first do storyboards, then we do an animatic, you know, then our, you know, once the animatic is, is approved, then we start, um, we start doing, um, you know, uh, actual cleaned up artwork and, uh, you know, then we, you know, we have, we have the sound and all that stuff. One great thing about doing sound, um, for motion comics is there's no lip movements to it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, at least yeah. for this one, we don't need to do that. And, uh, that's our, that's our, our guys, um, Ryan Kelly and, and, uh, uh Jason Navias, our art director and animators, they did it all that, the, all that motion that you see in there. That's all those guys. Wow, that's great. So, were you guys all working together in the same facility and putting it all together like that? It, what, the way it started was it was a more of a freelance project, but then uh, everybody sort of felt that it would be better that to bring me in. So, essentially, for uh, maybe six months or so, I was commuting up to New York City from my my place out here in Pennsylvania, yeah. and uh, it was it was actually really great uh, to be back there because I had worked there ten years ago. Yeah. Which is hilarious because the, the the company remember the company that when I when I said like oh yeah we got we let go and I moved into comics and all that stuff that yeah. was the same company I did Ninja Turtles at oh, wow. Konami Konami eventually acquired that company oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So 10 years later. So uh, like this is it's like in that night in 2009, we all get let go because of, you know, a lot of things happening and, you know, all this stuff. The company was going bankrupt. Eventually, Konami picks up the company. And yeah, 10 years later, I come back and it's and it's our same guys like our um, Jason and uh, Ryan. They used to work on Ninja Turtles. We had our, 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 our character designer, Adrian Barrios from to Ninja Turtles doing ad additional incidental characters like Lily. We had our background designer, Keith Conroy, doing backgrounds on there. So it was like getting the band together again, which was That's great. Great, man. And it sounds like a little bit of destiny there. I like that a lot. What's, yeah. what's next for you? I know that you, uh, you know, as you wrap a project and it's out there and people can buy it, you're already working on stuff that you can't oh, tell yeah. us too much about. What are you working on right now? Oh, well, right now, the big thing is, uh, is that I'm working on right now is um, while I was doing this, was I'm working on Excellence for Robert Kirkman, uh, written by Brendan Thomas and right. uh, drawn by Kari Randolph. That's my thing right now. And um, and I have a couple of other things that are, are that I can't really talk about that <laughs> that'll eventually appear. But I'm I'm always doing I'm always doing something. And one thing about freelance is you kind of have to use a bit of foresight where one ends and where one begins. You have to figure out where that sort of space is and where you can kind of put that then then look for the next job in advance. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Emilio, I can't wait to have you back on the show to to, uh, to find out what your next project is when you can talk about that. I've already seen some of the motion comic stuff in Contra uh, Rogue Corps, and you've kicked ass with that, my friend. So congratulations well, on that. Have a great uh, couple of days as uh, you know people start to get this game and give you feedback. But uh, it's it's great to see this. And what's so exciting for me is that this is the first game that your work is actually in the game. And it's such yes. a cool thing, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's it's just, it's really cool to just to, to be able to finally share this and also just, just have it out there, you know, just coming right on the tail of it.
That's awesome. All right, everybody. That's Emilio Lopez. Thank you so much, buddy. We'll see you soon.